Hi, I'm James, uh, and in today's edition of Coach's Corner, we're going to talk about static stretching uh, and try and answer the question, should I stretch before exercise? Uh, now, this is a question we get quite a lot in the gym, uh, and it's also a topic that divides opinion, uh, and it's something that not all coaches will agree on. So first off, let's clarify what we mean by static stretching. So static stretching uh, is where we hold the muscle in a lengthened position for an extended period of time. So normally anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes, although longer and shorter are also very common. Here you can see Lewis is giving us a nice example uh, of a static stretch for the hamstrings. So static stretching used to be commonplace in all warm-ups uh, until about the 1990s uh, when research emerged showing that uh, static stretching immediately before exercise could lead to some short-term reductions in a muscle's power output. So what we saw then was coaches around the world eliminating static stretching from the warm-ups for fear that it would have a negative impact on the exercises that we we're about to do in the session. So if static stretching in the warm-up uh, can lead to losses in strength and power, what should we do instead? Well, the first thing I'd recommend would be foam rolling. So foam rolling uh, helps produce some blood flow to the muscle, uh, helps reduce muscle pain, and it also provides some short-term increases in muscle length. Uh, but crucially, we don't get the same losses in strength and power that we would with static stretching. So here Lewis is giving us a nice example of some foam rolling of the calves. Brilliant, thanks Lewis. Uh, so the second thing that we recommend would be uh, some dynamic stretches. So dynamic stretches or mobilizations uh, involve putting the muscles into lengthened positions, but crucially just for very short periods of time. Uh, and when we move into them just for very short periods of time, we don't seem to get the same uh, losses in strength and power that we get with the holds. So Lewis is doing a demo, some downward dog. So it's a nice mobilization here for the calves and hamstrings. So you can see the muscles being put into a lengthened position, but it's a dynamic or active movement. So we're not holding those stretch periods for a long period of time. So we don't get those losses in strength and power. That's brilliant. Thanks, Lewis. So if foam rolling and dynamic stretching do a good job of increasing range of motion, is there ever a case for static stretching in the warm-up? Well, I would argue that there is. So a combination of foam rolling, dynamic stretching, and static stretching uh, does a better job of increasing range of motion than just uh, foam rolling and dynamic stretching alone. So sometimes it's worth a small trade-off uh, in strength and power for the increased range of motion. So uh, if we take the overhead position in the snatch as an example, uh, if you have stiff shoulders that's restricting your overhead position, then some, then some static stretching for the pecs and the lats, uh, if that allows you to get into a better overhead position, then I would argue that this would make a case for a good point to static stretch during the warm up. Uh, and this is especially true when you consider that in the snatch, the pecs and lats are only really acting as stabilizing muscles. So any reduction in, in strength and power in the upper body uh, is really not going to have a negative impact on performance as all the power is coming from the lower body. Uh, secondly, this trade-off uh, for increased range of motion, uh, sacrificing some strength and power, might not be as bad as we once feared. So a 2016 research review showed that when static stretches are held for longer than 60 seconds, we do see quite a significant drop in strength and power of around four to seven and a half percent. But when static stretches are held for less than 60 seconds, we see significantly smaller drop off in strength and power of only about one to two percent. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, if you are reasonably flexible, uh, then you probably don't need to static stretch before or during a warm up, uh, and you can just stick with dynamic stretching and foam rolling. Uh, and if you're in this category and you still want to perform some static stretches, uh, I would recommend doing them on non-training days, uh, at the end of a day, uh, or even after training if that's more convenient. However, if you do have some tight muscle groups and that might restrict you with some of the movements during the workouts, then I would recommend static, some static stretches uh, during the warm-up. Uh, in this case, the sequence I would follow would be to do some foam rolling first, then to move on to the static stretches, before doing a full dynamic warm up, which would feature some dynamic stretches. Uh, I would focus just on the tight muscle groups. So rather than stretching absolutely everything, just focus on the muscle groups that are tight and keep those stretches to less than 60 seconds uh, to minimize any negative impact it might have on strength and power. 
Uh, and the other important thing to note is if you are in this category, I wouldn't just stretch in a warm up. I'd also stretch at regular points. OK, so not necessarily during the workout, but away from the training. So stretch also on non training days uh, at the end of the day, uh, because if you are in this group, uh, then your aim should be to get to the position where you don't have to perform static stretches at the start of the workout. OK, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.